Okay, guys, as you know, there's tons of information online, whether it's forums, Facebook, YouTube, and not always in the audio file realm are you getting good information. It's a minefield out there. And normally I don't respond to some of the things that are just crazy out there because it really doesn't come from any credible sources. However, there was one thing I heard a few months ago, been meaning to do, uh, address it, that I heard that I think does involve deeper dive and a counter argument. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a deep dive into a subject that is near and dear to my heart because I basically started my channel on vibration control and how it could improve or if it could improve anything measurably in terms of reducing vibrations and then sonically how it would translate through. And obviously, since I started the channel and just creating these public videos for just a few people, uh, my understanding has grown and also I've become a uh, friends with a lot of experts in this area. So today I'm going to do a deep dive with Norman Varney of AV Room Service, who's done a lot of testing and has his own vibration control. And I've featured some others that have great vibration control products. And the key here that's spurned this is that decoupling versus coupling. There was a video, and I'm not even going to call out the person or the channel or anything like that, but it was such a large channel and such a big name, a legend in the hobby, um, that I thought, even though um, he mentioned in the video that he's not an expert and this is a personal preference, I do think that sometimes if you say you like ketchup on steak, that's fine, but live and let live. But it's also important to share a counter argument of why you probably don't want that or it won't apply to the masses of following that advice. So really what I heard in this video that kind of raised my eyebrows, J.R. Bosclair, Norman Varney, many others, it was actually brought up in my WhatsApp group, that's how I learned about it, was a theory that, or a preference for coupling a subwoofer to the floor and decoupling your mains. And frankly, you, you should, in my opinion, do both, and you're gonna learn why, uh, decouple both. But even if you were gonna choose cherry pick, the last thing you want to couple to the floor is your subwoofer. Now, again, in fairness, the reason behind this person's preference was he likes to feel, visceral feel, the vibration on the floor. That's something that he likes about a subwoofer. And again, fair enough. That's whatever your preference is, your preference. But there's a whole minefield of things when you drain, well, send vibrations to the floor. They don't drain. They actually can go right back up, but they also can get into your other equipment and make your floors and everything on your walls resonate and sing along with the music. So you may be trading, you know, some visceral feel and vibration, haptic feedback that you enjoy, but there is a cost to be paid. And it's much more, I think, for most people, beneficial to decouple their subs and their mains. And in this deep dive with Norman Varney, he's going to go into the science behind products he's invented to address that. And I also share, it's not just about him and his products. I share some others that I've had good success with. And I think this deep dive will be at least a good counter argument to explain why, yeah, some people may prefer certain aspects of vibrations, but in the long run, uh, term, you really want to get rid of these vibrations and hear accuracy, pitch definition, less muddiness, less resonating in the wall, less your floor singing along. So enjoy this vi video Zoom and let me know if you have any questions because Norm is going to be following along and happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, when people ask me, you know, where should I start as far as mechanical isolation, um, I'll say the subs <laughs> because the subwoofers, they're imparting the the most energy, the lowest frequencies, the most energy into the structure. And uh, so it causes the the whole structure to shake. As a matter of fact, you know, you're, I'm sure everyone has experienced a subwoofer in another part of the, the house. Well, you're going to hear it anywhere in the house because it's in the structure now. 
And uh, so it's a noise control annoyance, but to have the uh, the the tactile feeling, the haptic uh, experience is not something that I want. And it will be unique, just like um, anything to do with acoustics. It'll be everyone's situation will be different. Again, like you said, hey, if you want that, that's fine. Uh, no problem. But if you want neutrality and if you want consistency um, and repeatability, then you need to decouple. And if you do not, then those resonances are going to vary depending on your build on the construction materials and methods that are used. That's not what we want. And in the meantime, it's, um, it's blurring, you know, it's, it's hitting all the sound quality attributes. We don't want that either, you know? Well, on top of that, I mean, if you are feeling vibrations in your chair from your sub and you enjoy that, that's one part you may enjoy. But are you thinking of the deleterious effects it's having on your other equipment? Because those, if you're feeling it, guess what? Your other speaker is feeling it too. Your turntable's feeling it. So your tubes are vibrating. Like everything else is feeling that vibration too. And do yes. you really want that trade off? Um, it's just not worth it. There's other ways to get the haptic feedback. Uh, and just because you decouple your subs doesn't mean you don't get a visceral impact. It's not like headphones. You still get the gut punch. You get, the, but it's just more yeah. pitch definition, pure. It's not muddied and garbled. And so you're, some people like that. <laughs> some people There's like their walls to resonate. I understand yeah. that. I've seen that a million times. It's not really the best. And when people hear it right, because they may not have ever heard it right and decoupled, Correct. then they really start to appreciate how it can even sound better. But again, maybe you can go into, so I know you have yeah. some testing and slides and stuff. There, Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there is so much to talk about here, Jason. Um, what you uh, just rattled off, there are so many things that I'd like to, to touch. Um, first off, yes, there there's not just the structural resonances that are an annoyance to me anyway i mean um you know to to feel the the structural structure move and somebody likes that that's okay but to me it, it's a an annoyance and, and then also you pointed out the fact that it's vibrating everything and you have so much susceptibility you've got cables that are microphonic you've got tubes that are microphonic you have all your contacts that are microphonic you have turntables that feedback anything with a quartz crystal any clock is um is susceptible to these vibrations combine all that you know or any one of those things and you do not have the articulation um and you mentioned also you know most people have never experienced their structure being you know, resting peacefully. That's true. Hardly anyone has experienced that. When you isolate properly, the structure is now still. And um, it's not resonating. It's not buzzing. It's not rattling. When you couple to the ground, you now experience four arrival times. And I'll explain those. <clears throat> and I'll put up a slide. But here you go. So, the first arrival time that we experience is uh is is structural mechanical so the the speaker vibrates the cabinet um so this is the first one so here's the event let's just say it's a kick drum for example okay now the denser the material the faster and the further sound energy travels so let's say it's a concrete floor so it's going to arrive much quicker than than the air. Um, so the first arrival time is through the floor to your chair, to your butt via bone conduction to your ear. That's the first arrival time, mechanical, structural. The second one, that is airborne from your speaker to your ear, the one that we want. The third one is also airborne. This is sound uh, propagating around the room and then reflecting off of walls and ceilings and floors. Well, we can address those. We can control those with acoustical products, absorption and or diffusion and control those hard specular reflections. The, the fourth one is again structural now. 
This is buzzes and rattles and resonances. And so you might be looking at a duration of the first arrival time, the second, the third, to the fourth arrival time. Of, typically, it can be a, a second long. That's a lot of low frequency smearing. When you decouple, when you isolate mechanically from the structure, you improve all sound quality attributes and noise control. So again, now that subwoofer is not going to be heard in an adjacent space. And from a sound quality point of view, and it takes, on average, somebody who's familiar with their system, about three seconds to notice the improvement in sound stage, you know, width and depth, um, timbre, attacks and decays, spatiality, image size of, of the voices and so forth. It hits all the sound quality attributes and noise control with a simple decoupling device like the, the EVPs, which is what we sell.